distinguished guests that are here today, immediate family of a Professor Enyi, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to spend so much time because inaugural lecture is not meant to label ourselves with speeches, but rather to allow the presenter to present. Today we are here for the 12th inaugural lecture of Babcock University, at the first of its kind in accounting department. We want to thank the Lord for how far he has led us, and this is, a, is an old academic tradition whereby someone who has risen through the ranks and has reached the peak of the career as a professor, we need to tell the whole world what he is professing. And that is why we are gathered here this, this afternoon. Therefore, permit me to request Professor Eyi to stand and remain standing while I read the citation. Eyi Patrick Eyi was born on the 2nd of February 1960 at Agugu Umachima Uburu in Hauzara local government area of Ebony State, Nigeria. He started his primary education at St. Philip's Catholic School, Agugu Umachima Uburu in the year 1966. But like his peers from Eastern Nigeria, his early education was interrupted for four good years by the Nigerian Civil War, but was eventually concluded at Wesley L LSB School of Farm in Kwara State in the year 1976. Despite his exceptional brilliance, which secured him admission to three secondary schools, including the prestigious King's College in Lagos. He was unable to attend any for lack of sponsorship. Instead, he studied for GCO level and A levels as a private candidate and passed his papers in recorded time in 1980 and 1981, respectively. He proceeded to the London School of Accountants in London in July 1981 for ACCA Professional Accountancy Studies finishing in December 1983, after which he registered for a part-time degree program at Howard Hall University, New York, which he concluded in 1988 with magna cum laude second class upper division in 1998. He headed for Namdiasiko University, Oka, where he obtained a PGD and MBA in accountancy, graduating in 1999 and 2001 respectively. Having done with his second degree, he proceeded to Ebony State University, Abakaliki, for his PhD accounting in 2003, finishing in April 2007. Professor Enyi Patrick Enyi is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, the International Association of Registered Financial Consultants, USA, the American Academy of Financial Management, AAFM, the American Accounting Association, AAA, the Institute of Industrial Administrators of Nigeria, NIAA, Certified Institute of Public Administrators, CIPA UK, the Institute of Public Accountants of Australia, and the International Institute of Certified Forensic Investigation Professionals, amongst others. Professor Enyin began his professional accounting career with the firms of Egun Jobi, Suleiman and Co, Chartered Accountants, Kano, in January 1984 as an audit training and later moved to Lagos in 1986 as an accountant to a commercial enterprise in 1990. He moved to Onisha and established a consultancy in outfit in association with the firm of I.D. Nwoji & Co. Chartered Accountants, which he also managed as the Onisha branch resident manager. In July 1992, he was appointed as the group accountant to DK Group of Companies, a group of 13 firms engaged in manufacturing, trading, transportation, financing, and construction activities, Uli, and Ambra State. Professor Enyi was the DK Group was with the DK Group until 1995 when he went to full-time consulting with his own firm, 
Elephant Finance, an investment company limited. The eventful career spread of Professor Enyi enabled him to garner sound experiences and deep knowledge in almost all fields of finance, accounting, and management. Ladies and gentlemen, seeing the need to advance the course of the society by impacting knowledge, Professor Enyi started his teaching career in the year 1997 with the University of Calabar Onicha Outreach Center and has taught in reputable institutions such as Namdia Sikwe University Oka on a part-time, Madonna University of Kiji and Ambra State 2000-2005, Ebony State University Abakaliki 2006-2007, and Convener University Ota 2007-2010. Professor Wenyin joined the service of Babcock University on December 1, 2010. As a highly skilled computer programmer, Enyi Patrick Enyi single-handedly developed Nigeria's first workable computer-based accounting package in 1998 and capped it with the microfinance banking <laughs> and capped it with the microfinance banking software which are all deployed applications in various organizations in Nigeria. As an academic, Enyi developed many finance-based mathematical formulas and models including a simplified IRR interpolation formula. In addition to a world-class <laughs> in addition to a world-class motive discriminant analysis, some insolvency detection and prediction model called relative solvency ratio RSR, which has been learned, which has been tested and proven in many business solvency related researches worldwide. He also developed a Nigerian version of the SPSS software, incorporating mathematical analysis tools for students and researchers. He has been involved in the execution of many governmental sponsored training and audit contracts across the Federation of Nigeria. Professor Enyi Patrick Enyi has successfully supervised close to 28 master's degree students and more than 22 graduated PhD graduates. 14 as a major supervisor and 8 as a co-supervisor with still more under mentorship. He has published widely in local and international journals and has continued to receive accolades for the quality of his research works. Recently, in 2012, he developed and published a model for determining individual product break-even point from a joint product break even point thereby, breaking one of the constraining factors in break even analysis, a task that was practically impossible before this time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for his contributions in, to humanity, Professor Enyi was honored with a PhD honorary Cursor by Atlas. Atlas University of Philadelphia, USA, in 2005, for his outstanding research and contribution in insolvency and accounting. Fellow American Academy of Financial Management, AFM, 2005, an Academy Nobel International Award by the Institute of Industrial Administrators of Nigeria, 2008. Professor Enyi is a past chairman of OTA and District Society of ICANN and a past member of the Students Education and Training Committee of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria. He is presently a member of the Governing Council of the Ebony State College of Education, ECO, Abakaliki. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, Professor Enyi is the current dean of the School of Management Sciences, Babcock University, Lisharema. His other academic leadership include Head of the Department of Accounting before Madonna University, that's 2003-2006. Head of the Department of Accountancy, Ebony State University, Abakaliki, 2005 to 2007. Head of the Department of Accounting, Covenant University, Ota, 2007-2010. And Head of the Department of Accounting, Babcock University, 2012 to 2014. Professor Enyi is a member of the editorial board of the International Journal of Accounting and Taxation based in the USA. 
and a consulting editor to Time Journal of Management and Social Sciences based in India. He's married, <laughs> he's married to Mrs. Chukulit Chukudi Enyi, a public health professional and currently a doctoral student at North Central University, Minnesota, in USA. And they are blessed with just seven children. <laughs> Hello. Five wonderful boys. Virtually all of them are here to this morning and two girls. Join me, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming to the podium Professor Enyi Patrick. Enyi has developed the inaugural lecture, Accounting in the Digital Age, Creating Values with Paperless Decision Support Systems. Welcome, Prof. The chairman of the Babcock University Governing Council, the president, the vice chancellor, Professor Ademola Tayo, the senior vice president, the deputy vice chancellor, Professor Ian Njuku Okoro, the senior vice president, the deputy vice chancellor, Management Services, Professor Sunday Ajao Awolabi, all other principal officers and associates officers that are here and those that are not here, your Excellencies, present or in proxy, your Royal Highnesses here, present, erudite scholars, learned colleagues, friends, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols that I have not mentioned are duly observed. Permit me first to say thank you, Jesus, who by his saving grace made this occasion a possibility. I will also crave your indulgence in permitting me to appreciate the choice of my person as the first professor from the School of Management Sciences and the second professor from the old Babcock Business School to deliver an inaugural lecture. I feel highly honored and privileged to accept the call, fully aware of the importance of inaugural lecture series on the development of institutional legacies and the advancement of accounting and other disciplines and professions globally. I would like to commence this lecture by quoting the statement made by the erudite professor Eno L. Enanga in his 1991 inaugural lecture at the University of Ibadan that public lectures from the chair of accounting and business finance do not come up too frequently. This is obviously because though there is water everywhere, but there is very little to drink. Every organization, profit and non-profit on planet Earth needs the services of an accountant because every business success is determined defined and measured in monetary figurative terms. But it is a common knowledge that the number of organizations worldwide 
far exceeds the number of properly qualified accountants. The combined membership strength of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, and the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN, in Nigeria, is still less than 200,000 professionally certified accountants, despite the fact that incorporated and registered businesses far exceed 500,000 in a country with over 170 million people. The situation is even worse in the academia. <clears throat> Though there are no ready statistics, but I'm sure that there are less than 50 professors of accounting in Nigeria as of today. And may I see this opportunity to congratulate Babcock University for producing the 16th professor of accountant that has delivered inaugural, inaugural lecture in Nigeria as a whole. <laughs> and I'm aware that public lectures of this nature are intended to defend or give insight into the subject matter of one specialization. I will go beyond this because the accounting of today has gone beyond the comprehension of debit and credit record keeping profession to become a versatile decision support and decision making from strategic advisory profession. However, my attention should not be seen as an attempt at the abjuration of the non rim of accounting as a noble and conservative profession, rather it should be taken as an apophasis of an academic discipline which through essence was long obscured in history due to the passive nature of its application by practitioners. Of truth, accounting accountancy is neither new nor unpublicized in the business world, public or private. But it is important to further on earth hitherto unknown facts and contemporary development brought about by the ever-changing world of technology, especially for the purpose of full exploitation of the potentials of the discipline in today's global village and e-commerce scenario, which I choose to call the digital age. This is, uh, this in specific terms is overly important because modern day accounting has overgrown the level of traditional journals, ledger sheets, and debit and credit entries in memorandum books. As opined by the respected Professor Inanga, as cited earlier, public lectures from scholars have traditionally tended to serve as opportunities to use one's discipline to reflect on matters that are both of academic interest and sufficient importance and concern to the wider Nigerian or global society. During the build-up to the preparation for this inaugural lecture, I am able senior vice president academics, Professor Yajuku Okoro, Jokingly opined that accountants are only good at one thing, and that is to count ants. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> okay. <laughs> One wonders how the erudite professor of anatomy and surgery would have felt if everyone else were to refer to surgeons as certified human butchers. <laughs> After all, he referred to himself as the hand that handles the knife. <laughs> when translated directly from the Igbo narration, where the original coinage came from, this apparently harmless joke jolted my thoughts, and I quickly realized how, in practical terms, 
the society misinterprets the meaning and the role of the accountant and the accounting profession. More shocking is the painful fact that accounting as an academic discipline became only recognized in universities worldwide long after most of his peers and close relations such as mathematics, economics, and law have been fully entrenched and offers, offered as degree courses in universities' curricula. With accounting studied only as an appendage to management or business administration. This treatment obviously came from the wrong notion that though accounting is an important aspect of managerial feedback system, the earlier method of his knowledge acquisition through apprenticeship or article classship renders it incapable of academic or intellectual fecundity. Even the legal profession, which historically is the twin brother of the accounting profession, has at one time or the other tried to absorb and or superimpose its vociferous and overbearing edge on the functions of the accountant simply because its members are charged with drafting the legal framework of regulatory legislative instruments that control business and economic transactions, but without realizing the apparent deficiency for figures and mathematical manipulations. To clarify the assertion on the close relationship between law and accounting, Brown, 1905, in a book titled A History of Accounting and Accountants, cited in Alexander 2002, stated that prior to July 1854, when a former petition for a separate royal charter was made to Queen Victoria of England, Accountants often belong to the same associations as solicitors due to their common training as both record keepers and scribes from the cradle of literacy, commerce, religion, communal and market development, as well as in the development of global civilization. It is on this premise that the title of this inaugural lecture, Accounting in the Digital Age, Creating values with paperless decision support systems was coined. Accounting and management resources. Rosin, 1992, suggested from the studies that the development of accounting came along with that of money and numbers, which probably were related to the taxation and trading activities of temples in ancient Mesopotamia. The work also explained that. The numerical metaphor employed in accounting came as a result of the interrelationship between money, numbers, and accounting, which became inseparable in their origins and which inadvertently emerged in the context of controlling goods, stocks, and transactions in the temple economy of the ancient world. This work, no doubt, shed a very bright light on the relationship between economics and accounting because while accounting is instructive on the development of economic theories of wealth creation through historical records and reports, economics, on the other hand, influences how accounting takes stock of the wealth created and how they were applied in solving societal problems and creating more wealth. It would have been impossible to manage any organization effectively without the use of some foresight and the process of feedback, which are contained in accounting records and reports. These are the two basic important elements which must be present for there to be any meaningful decision making and managerial control function. Managerial foresight comes by way of financial and operational plans while the process of feedback is made possible through meticulous recording and analysis of transactions and operational activities of the firm. This latter process is what we came to regard as accounting 
Accounting is not only a managerial vision guide, it is also the major catalyst in wealth creation. Turner 2015 reported that a new international federation of accountants, IFAC study, has indicated that accountants contribute more than half a trillion dollars to the global economy. The IFAC study was said to have linked a strong accountancy profession to improved living standards for citizens. The IFAC study entitled Nexus 2, the accountancy profession, a global value add, also showed that global regions which employ a higher share of accountants have a higher per capita gross domestic product and that there is a very strong correlation between the share, of account, uh, the share of accountants in total employment and the United Nations Human Development uh, Index, which measures life expectancy, years of schooling, and income. The probable reason given for this by Fayez Shaduri, IFAC CEO, is that when nations have a robust system, to track the flow of money in government within business and between organizations, transparency and accountability are improved. Organizations are strengthened and economies are enhanced. In one of the speeches delivered at a public function at Ota, Ogun State, the past president of the Institute of Federal Accountants of Nigeria, Major General uh, Sebastian Uwama retired, humorously posited that accounting is the first profession created by God when he asked Adam and Eve to explain or account for the reason why they were hiding from him. <laughs> and also, that accounting will be the last profession to perform its duties at the close of, his, uh, of this uh, age, when all men are required to give account of their lives while on earth, <laughs> as judgment before God. As, rhetorica, as rhetorically as this may sound, it is indeed a truism that accounting is a foremost professional discipline. To buttress this assertion of the past ICANN president, the book of Exodus 38. <clears throat> chapter 38, verse 21, recorded the first official and biblical recognition of accounting and the appointment of an accountant when Moses commanded that Aitama, son of Aaron, be in charge of counting the sum of all items used to construct the tabernacle of testimony. The connection of accounting and spiritual Spirituality is as old as the beginning of civilization itself. Robson, 1992, asserted that the development of accounting along with that of money and numbers may be related to the taxation and trading activities of uh, temples. He stated further that another part of the explanation as to why accounting employs the numerical metaphor is that money Numbers and accounting are interrelated and perhaps inseparable in their origins. All emerge in the process of accounting uh, for controlling their goods, stocks, and their transactions in the temple economy of Mesopotamia more than 7,000 years ago. Accounting is the greatest aspect of an organization's financial management function which in itself is a greater aspect of the overall management function. One management scientist, Robert Appleby, refers to management as getting things done through others. But we are all aware that management, though, centers on the effective utilization of human resources towards achieving organizational goals, goes far beyond that. It includes to a greater extent, the judicious and economic allocation and use of other non-human resources 
in the face of stiff trade competitions and internal competitive needs for these usually scarce material and uh, financial resources. To this effect, we view financial management as a decision-making process for the prudent utilization of capital resources of a business enterprise. In other words, financial management can equally be said to cover the core subject of management since it is the main objective of management to utilize capital resources prudently in order to, in order, <coughs> sorry, in the achievement of uh, the organizational goal. The distinguishing factor, however, remains that financial management requires specialization and expertise and may be concerned with mainly advisors, advices on the prudent allocation and or reallocation of the resources of the organization are converted into financial format. Another important aspect of financial management is that it provides the basis for business planning, investment diversification, and cash flow statements. Thus, it can be rightly assumed that the objective of financial management in any organization is pinned on the prudent management through utilization of the capital resources towards the attainment of primary goals of, <coughs> of its primary goals uh, in business. Modern accounting, a historical perspective. The foundation of modern accounting comes from a simple record keeping function represented in artifacts known as receipts, vouchers, and journal entries. When in the course of a society's uh, development, does record keeping surface? It's a question. It is difficult to imagine families and small hunter gatherer groups bound by kinship using even basic accounting for their internal dealings. Indeed, formal recording of transactions will likely be repugnant to family members or close friends. At the other extreme, extreme are modern civilizations that are characterized by frequent long-term cooperative uh, interactions between strangers. It is usually hard to imagine that these economies could function without well-developed record-keeping and accounting systems. The receipt, for example, is ubiquitous to even mundane economic exchange in developed economies. It can be argued that accounting records play a critical role in facilitating societal expansion from small king based groups, such as clans and tribes, to modern civilization. Two opposite perspectives on the emergence of accounting were made possible first by the work of Basu, Kirk, and Weymeyer in 2007, which hypothesized, hypothesized that record keeping appears early in an economy's development as a device to sustain agents' reputation for trustworthy behavior. They posited that record keeping enables scale expansion and division of labor in an exchange economy, which implies that record keeping emerged before markets, organizations, and supporting institutions. However, the record, however, the second and standard academic perspective is that accounting emerge or emerges in response to stewardship and valuation demands for accounting information from hierarchical organizations and capital markets. This view was posited by Watts and Zimmerman in 1986. Under this view, causality runs from extant economic arrangements to accounting, which suggests that while accounting may emerge early, it will do so after the appearance of uh, markets, organizations, 
and supporting institutions, such as money. Which of these perspectives better explains the origin of basic accounting function is an open question. Viewed from another dimension, the need for accounting actually arose from mankind, uh, when mankind began to produce above subsistence level. The surplus harvested crops stored uh, required uh, attention and proper record keeping using stones, woods, papers, papyr that were papyrus, and uh, machines. While archaeological evidence revealed acts of record keeping since Babylonian civilization, see if you got three, modern accounting could be unquestionably attributed to the outcome of industrial revolution in the 17th to 19th century Europe. Demand for accountability was necessitated by the emergence of joint stock companies whose owners demand full accountability of the resources entrusted to the managers. In addition to the demand of the owners, managers also need financial information to appraise past performance and to plan future operations. Glossier and Under Down in 1997 posited that accounting has become the wheel on which capitalist economic development, work creation, and distribution vehicle revolves. This is even more pronounced in this our digital age now than ever. Also, Elliot in 1998 opined that without accounting infrastructure, the witness economic transformation from primary to secondary level wouldn't have been possible. The post-industrial United States has drastically reduced the imperfection in the country's capital market, thereby reducing information asymmetry. This implies that an average investor in the United States is readily equipped with up-to-date information on risks and future returns on investment, thereby making him a more proactive investor to entrepreneur than his African counterpart. Fallacies of accounting. There are two controversies that have not been fully resolved in accounting. These controversies but border on two fallacious beliefs in accounting. The first one is that accounting was born out of the dictates and demands of accountability and control resulting from development associated with growing communities, advent of market economy, and associated institution. In this case, money. Recent research findings are revealed above have shown to the contrary that accounting, numbers, and money came pari at the very threshold of history. The second fallacy is that double entry accounting was invented by Friar Luca Pacioli, at least. That is the popular notion in most accounting textbooks. Again, the works of Haifa and Albrecht, 2009, started in Turner in 2015, revealed that the earliest extant evidence of double entry bookkeeping appears in the ledger of Giovanni Farofi and Company, a firm of Florent Florentine merchants between 1299 and 1300. 200 years before Pacioli published his uh, treatise on double entry bookkeeping in 1494. Baxter, 1980, posited that the account charge and discharge system was operating alongside the double entry bookkeeping long before Luca Pacioli published his uh, work. The consensus 
is therefore that Luca Bacioli did not invent the double entry system of bookkeeping, rather he modernized and made it more popular above his charge and discharge competitor. Accounting the modern tool of business. We have talked much on the historical perspective of the subject of accounting without knowing exactly what it is. There are several definitions of the term accounting by various authors, but the ones that appeal most to this speaker are those given by Professor Anao of the University of Benin and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, AICPA. According to Anao, 1989, accounting is a process of handling information of economic and uh, financial nature which is highly useful and adaptive to varying uh, situation. The AICPA, on the other hand, defines it as the process of identifying, measuring, and communicating economic information to, uh, to permit informed judgments and decisions by users of the information. The two definitions were able to convey the desired information unveiling what accounting is. They were able to broadly des describe the sub-activities of accounting which include identifying, measuring, and communicating. The ARB, that is Accounting Research Bulletin, definition went further to highlight the rationale that is the major reason why these three sub-activities must be carried out for accounting. In other words, accounting exists to improve judgments and decisions made by the management of organizations on economic resources entrusted to them. Accounting as a managerial information system. Business information system, or better still, management information system, exists to provide managers with tactical, strategic, and operational information that they require in the day-to-day -day running of their various organizations. The objective of a good management information system are to provide cutting-edge decision-making information to the organization's management at one, the shortest possible term, two, the lowest possible cost, and with three, the least ambiguous terms. Where information used in decision making is inaccurate, surely the outcome of the decision will be failure. In the same vein, if the data used in processing the information employed in the decision process is already stale, then the same measure of failure in the decision outcome is expected in this contemporary corporate world of fast business and uh, competitive uh, opportunities. A good management information system embedded in cutting edge information technology is developed to gain competitive edge and fast forward the pro progress and economic development of a firm or industry. If we are to view accounting as an instrument of attaining accountability, then accountability itself plays most important role towards the growth and success of uh, any entity. For accounting to play its role in an organization successfully, the accountants must recognize their full expectations, which are outlined as follows. One, preparing and communicating financial and managerial accounting information to the various users, assisting management with development uh, with relevant information to curb or eliminate wastages, setting up and running an efficient system of internal controls, preventing and investigating frauds 
treasury management, tax planning and inventory management, securing the assets of the organization, and so on and so forth. The above list is not in any way exhaustive, as modernity has tended to perpetually expand the responsibility of the contemporary accountant. However, the quality, accuracy, and timeliness of the Nigeria information generated will determine the success and the effectiveness of the decision to be taken with them. This is the main area of concern to the accountants. It is also the reason why most of the author's scholarly works centered majorly on producing efficient and effective foundational platforms upon which managerial decision variables and reports are based. For instance, the development and introduction of the operational break-even point, operational markup rate, the relative solvency ratio, which is uh, detective and predictive uh, properties, adequate working capital ratio, the English modified internal rate of uh, return formula, the multi-product break-even formula by the author, are all geared and have indeed helped to improve the quality of accounting information. The basis for the measure of performance using capital employed was also improved upon by the author through the introduction of the enhanced return on capital employed euros with a study which proved that most effective return on capital employed rules can only be achieved by measuring the profit before tax against the actual amount spent on generating the profit, the total, that is, the total operating cost, rather than the capital employed at the end of the financial year. These claims are boldly supported by evidences of global applicability of the new innovations through confirmatory and comparative research findings from jurisdictions such as India, Malaysia, Philippines, Iran, Turkey, Kenya, UK, and even by local researchers here in Nigeria. We have some scholarly works quoted here, which include Godratsi and Gambari, 2014, Adele Hamdireza and uh, Eni, 2014, ADA 2013, and then Singh and Astres, 2010. Users of accounting information can be broadly classified into two, internal and external. Whereas internal users are those persons are those persons who take decisions on the kind, type, and quantity of resources available and the way the resources can be applied to achieve the organization's objectives. External users consist of shareholders, potential inventors, suppliers, creditors, uh, state, state agencies, and the public. More than before, Nigerians are becoming increasingly interested in investing in the organized business environment. This is evidence in the quantum of trading that takes place on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, especially between the years 2003 and 2009. To be a successful investor, you need the financial information of the companies which shares are traded in the market, making this information available to all the right, uh, to all at the right time is the primary responsibility of the directors through their accountants. Accounting, the digital age. The introduction of the first commercial computer named ENIAC by the International Business Machine, IBM, in 1945, gradually changed the modus operandi of uh, accounting as this noble discipline was one of the foremost applications to which the new number crunching machine uh, monster was initially deployed. ENIAC was followed in 1951 by UNIVAC, which was developed by John Presper Eckert and John uh, Mochley. It was noted that these were indeed gigantic machines 
use traditionally for scientific applications compared to what we now use as computers today. Thereafter, many others of more powerful speed, smaller sizes, and more defined applications were de uh, developed. This was then followed, of course, by more user-friendly operating systems, and not too long ago, the internet. These more powerful computers, software, graphics, networking capability, including the internet, have helped organizations worldwide to become more flexible and highly responsive to the needs of the business world, giving power to both shop floor operatives, workers, and their management. In the opinion of Alta 1996, information and communication systems enable new forms of organization, new ways to work, and new ways to compete. They give new meaning to everyday things, such as money, as we now have electronic currency, like Bitcoin. Books. Books and journals are now published both in hard copy and soft electronic copies, which can be carried and read with laptops and smartphones. Offices. It is now easy for someone to work from the comfort of his home through virtual office facilities and also have meetings with dispersed correspondent through e-classrooms and teleconferencing. Advertisements that using web adverts have shattered political boundaries as advert postings in one remote location can be viewed globally. And entertainment through web TV, YouTube, and other internet based social networking. Awo Yelu, 2001, noted that Nigerian banks improve the effectiveness and competitiveness through the use of information and communication technology. Of year 2005, also agreed that e-payment has greatly enhanced the efficiency of transactions and payment systems in Nigeria. Accounting and the accountant, the loved and the hated. Perhaps the most misunderstood profession, a professional in the corporate world today is the accountant. This is primarily because his role is all-encompassing and intricately interwoven with every human professed economic activity, be it medicine, law, or legal practice, engineering, agriculture, service, or general commerce, etc. It is also as a result of the feed forward, feed backward, and real time control nature of the duties of an accountant. For instance, he is seen as the chief security officer of an organization when he is engaged in the day-to-day -day function of scrutinizing, recording, and approving of financial transactions and supervising the inflow and outflow of resources uh, to ensure smooth and unhindered operations. He becomes a bloodhound or witch hunter to his peers and other managers of resources when he is acting as an auditor, especially when the targets of his scrutiny have skeletons in their operational cupboards. He is seen as a scientist when he performs activity forecasting function for his organization. He is seen as a hatchet man when he interprets the tax laws to his uh, clients and undertakes bad duty investigation on behalf of the government, while he becomes a savior when he helps his clients out of tax-related problems. He becomes a policeman 
when he performs investigative functions as a forensic accountant and he is seen as an arbitrator when he helps to clarify or unravel naughty transactions in disputed business relationships. The never-ending conflicting roles of the accountant can also see him as an undertaker in receivership and trusteeship engagement when the unfortunate but sometimes inevitable issue of corporate failure occurs, even in the death of humans. He is there as the unpaid agent of the government to compute capital transfer tax and to oversee the appropriateness in the devolution of the diseased estate to the beneficiaries. He is also a commonplace professional who must be seen to possess the magical mind of a philosopher and the analytical ability of a first-rate computing machine. The accountant is the only professional who polices his own work. Perhaps it is this seemingly conflicting roles associated with the accounting for, uh, profession that made the accountant the professional that most other stakeholders in the organizational environment love to hate, respect, or feared as the case may be. So, <laughs> the computer and the accountant. As posited earlier, accounting was one of the earliest beneficiaries of the introduction of digital computer. And accountants have equally reason to embrace the benefits offered by digital machine. As early as 1979, the duo of Dan Brick, Lynn, and Bob Frankstein invented the electronic spreadsheet, which in their explanation is intended to replace the accountant's pencil and the columnar analysis sheets and pads. A spreadsheet is a popular program used to analyze numeric information which helps to make meaningful business decisions possible. However, before the advent of the electronic computers, businessmen and the accountants were known to have relied on accounting aids or instruments to help manipulate large numbers, manage their cash and credit resources, and balance their books. The ancient scribes, that is the accountants, and their employers, kings, emperors, and businessmen, made extensive use of the abacus and napier bones in their way, uh, sorry, in their day-to-day -day analysis of their business transactions. Task collections and management of entrusted resources and fortunes. It is noteworthy that the principles underlying the computational operations of the abacus, which origin is still the subject of some debate, and Napier bones developed by John Napier, a Scot, in the 17th century, helped in the eventual development of the modern-day electronic uh, computer. Electronic spreadsheet. The electronic spreadsheet, which the accountant developed, application is an automated version of the traditional accountant's columnar ledger sheets or pad. Fresh sheets are used by accountants, now extended to non-accountants, for a variety of applications ranging from share price analysis, sales, inventory, and expense analysis, production planning and monitoring, budgeting and budgetary control, cost estimation to simple household record keeping. In the words of Hag and Perry, 2002, spreadsheet software has been one of the most popular piece of software of all times. The following statement clarifies their position. Prior to the advent of electronic spreadsheet,
Sorry. Pardon me. Prior to the advent of electronic spreadsheets, accountants used paper ledgers and make entries with pencils so that they could easily modify various entries after recalculating new values using a calculator. This could be somewhat laborious. However, all these have changed with the introduction of electronic spreadsheets. This is buttressed by the fact that VisiCAC helped some workers to reduce 20 hours per week work to 15 minutes only. I will not want to bore you with long list of accounting softwares, but I will go straight to their usefulness. <coughs> the list of accounting softwares is uh, endless. For PACA 2011, reporting on the result of a study carried out by McKinsey in partnership with Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation entitled, entitled Inclusive growth and financial security. The benefits of e payments to Indian society uh, is made that automating all government payment flows could save the Indian government up to $22.4 billion annually. The savings will result from admitting three manual payment inefficiencies, which is list listed as leakages, transaction costs, ad and the uh, administrative and the uh, overhead costs. Problems of the digital age. Just as the sovereign Lord created everything, male and female, positive and negative, there is also the other side of the digital age, despite the overabundance of its positive benefits on accounting, the oversimplification of the accounting information generation and the retrieval system gave rise to a number of hitherto unforeseen problems. These include increasing fraudulent activities, uh, process, processing of uh, faulty information, And uh, not, all account, uh, not all activities requiring financial analysis can equally be computerized. Computerized on transactions leave less audit trail. Sometimes we need audit trail. Uh, most of the time we need audit trail to see whether things have gone wrong, but uh, uh, computer, computerized uh, systems don't give that. What about education? The fact that about 60% of uh, Nigerians are illiterate is already a natural barrier. And even among the so-called educated persons, how many are computer literate? Information stored on computer media can easily be lost without hope of replacement. The rapid development associated with uh, the computer industry could lead to infrequent changes in computer hardware and subsequently making the changeover from one system to another unpalatable. Scholarly contributions, scholarly and professional contributions of the author. Accounting is one of those few disciplines which scholars in other fields consider to be of limited scope and research capabilities. But this author states with all boldness and assured affirmation that the accounting field is like an endless ocean, which importance and usage evolves as technology advances, and uh, trade expands. The author has made significant input into development and practice of modern accounting in the following dimensions. Uh, accounting foundation and fundamentals. Um, <clears throat> the areas that the author contributed in are improved internal rate of return, IRR, uh, effective corporate solvency measurement formula, 
correlative severity ratio, operational break-even theory, and the joint products break-even model. Another one is the enhanced return on capital employed heroes. All these the details are provided in the book. Then the second aspect of the author's work is the automation of accounting and finance functions. Um, in the citation, I think this has been read, but let me just mention that there are four, uh, there are three particular products here that have been developed by the author. The first one is L Banker, which is a microfinance banking software, which are in, de in deployment in four microfinance banks in eastern Nigeria. Uh, the G-Ledger accounting package is also being used. And then the BAPSTAT statistical package for social science researchers developed in-house at Babcock University, Elisha Remo, here. The literary contributions also involve the production of uh, five books, which are listed. Then, the contributions of the author to the nation. I have made notable contributions to society in many diverse ways. Chief among these, uh, one, I was elected first chairman of Otan District Society of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, I can, and I served for two years. <laughs> two, I have served three tenors as a member of the ICANN Student Education and Training Committee. <laughs> three, I was a member of the ICANN team that developed the accounting curriculum for Pan African University in 2013. <laughs> Four, I've led several account teams to many universities and polytechnics for curricular review and accreditation. I was the financial secretary of my town union, Obu People's Assembly, 1995 to 1997. <laughs> I was chairman of the People's Assembly, Financial Branch, 1999 to 2005. I am a serving member Governing Council, Ebony State College of Education, Yuku Abakaliki, from 2015 to date. Contributions to academics. My general contributions to academics include the following. A, I successfully reproduced myself many times over by supervising either as a main supervisor or as a co-supervisor 25 PhD graduates. in accounting and accounting-related fields in two universities. One of them now is a full professor and a deputy vice chancellor. <laughs> Thank you. And there are five others now in the rank of associate professor. I have also successfully Supervised two MPhil and 23 MSc graduates in accounting. I have examined three PhD theses, two in Nigeria and one in an Indian university, and five MSc dissertations. I have assessed three professorial candidates and three leadership candidates for four top Nigerian universities. I have served as head of department in three Nigerian universities spanning over 10 years. <laughs> then, my contributions to Babcock University. My coming to Babcock University was divinely designed, as I had a revelation of that in a dream two years earlier. Here, in Babcock University, I have served in various capacities as follows. 
I was a member of the Ways and Means Technical Committee on Financial Controls in Backwork University, whose brilliant recommendation never went beyond the top of the table of the man <laughs> university management. So, I served as the head of the Department of Accounting during the critical period of transition from regular degree program to ICANN MOU-backed program and multiple, and multiple accreditation exercises for both professional, institutional, undergraduate and postgraduate programs. I was the vice dean of the old Babcock Business School, a position I had until September 30, 2015. I became the Dean of the School of Management Sciences officially on October 1, 2015, and I have been serving in that capacity till date. I was a member of the PG Abstract Review Committee of the old BBS, and now the Chairman of the PG Abstract Review Committee for the School of Management Sciences. At the departmental level, I heard and still hold the position of the PG Research Review Committee and Undergraduate Examination Review Committee. I have represented, I've, sorry, I have presented papers on more than two occasions at the in-house training workshop for accountants and auditors of the university. <laughs> Awards and recognitions. During my eventful career as academic, I have been privileged to receive the following awards. Fellowship Award 2005, awarded by the American Academy of Financial Management for Contribution to Accounting and Financial Management. PhD Honoris Causa Award 2005, awarded by the Atlas University, Philadelphia, USA, for, for contribution to research in accounting and financial management. Fellowship Award 2008, awarded by the Institute, uh, Institute of uh, Industrial Administration of, of Nigeria for contribution to leadership and administration in Nigeria. Academic Noble International Award 2008, awarded by the Institute of uh, Industrial Administration of Nigeria for academic excellence. Fellowship Award 2013, awarded by the British Institute of Certified Public Administrators for outstanding contribution to public administration. Fellowship Award 2015, awarded by the Institute of, uh, sorry, awarded by the International Institute of Certified Forensic Investigation Professionals, IICFIP USC, for outstanding intellectual contribution to forensic accounting. Award of Excellence 2016, awarded by the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, USA, Lagos Chapter, for outstanding contribution to training of fraud examiners and innovative research in fraud detection and prevention in Nigeria. <laughs> the last one was nominated for an award of Honorary Fellowship of Certified Business Management Professionals of the Unicaribbean Business uh, School in Lagos. This is yet to be uh, given. <coughs> Conclusion. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to opine that by observation, to be evident that the world of accounting has embraced the digital age. This is visible from every aspect of modern business transactions. The banking sector in Nigeria has fully integrated the ICT in its operations, ranging from online and real-time systems for transactions processing to the entrenchment of the compulsory use of the automated teller machines that enables round the clock banking from any terminal and those that enables currency conversion. E-banking has been of a great benefit to Nigerians. And to Nigerians and the Nigerian economy. Most other 
organizations have followed suit as no entity want to be left behind in the digital race. To truly remain in contention, every designing business entity must endeavor to embrace a responsive financial information processing system that can take advantage of favorable global economic events and ward off unfavorable ones. Accounting in the digital age has helped to leapfrog the, business, the benefits of doing businesses by creating values for corporate and non-corporate stakeholders far in excess of its costs. The digital age through the application of the internet or world wide web has made the world a, a global village in which the next shopping complex is there at the click of a mouse, no matter how remotely located the customer is. From all the aforesaid, it is therefore overly incontrovertible that accounting is the giant among all professions because it is the most ancient <laughs> and the most divinely pronounced according to research and scriptural, and scriptural findings. And being so, it encompasses every aspect of human endeavor which involves the use of money. Finally, whether the accountant is using the clay tokens as with the ancient Mesopotamians, the stone tablets and papyrus as with the ancient Egyptians, the loose leaf ledger and analysis sheets as with pre-electronic data processing accounting, the tape, disk, flash drive, ERP, uh, ETC, um, as with modern day accounting to record and analyze transactions, data, and documents. The objective remains the same, and that is to generate, analyze, interpret, and transmit economic-based managerial control data for useful and timely decision making as required by business owners and managers or as needed by other economic resources, resources controllers, thereby adding values that multiplies existing wealth and creates opportunities for generating further wealth. This being the case, the digital age has come to make the importance of accounting in our life ever so overwhelming. <laughs> to conclude this lecture, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I would like to appreciate the Senate and management of Babcock University, especially our amiable indefatigable and go by the rules, President. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Ademola Stephen Tyre. <laughs> His predecessor, Professor James Kayo de Makinde, for bringing me to Babcock and making me to realize my full academic potentials. I say more transforming power to your parents. I also appreciate our frank and ever supportive Senior Vice President Academic, Professor Ian Chuku Okoro, the Vice President Management Services, Professor Sunday Owolabi. And surely it will be mysterious of me not to remember my former Provost and Boss, Professor Anya Diji Aina, now the Vice Chancellor of Caleb University in Monta Lagos. <laughs> and le uh, ladies and gentlemen, he here seated, and since the protocol did not recognize him, I will want to. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Sorry about that, sir. <laughs> and his predecessor, as dean of old BBS, Professor S.A. Adebola as well as a complete gentleman par excellence, Professor Dayo Alao, all of whom are colleagues, friends, and mentors combined to me. I also appreciate my very caring neighbor and dean of Veronica Adelike School of 
social sciences, Professor Femi Ajayi, and a host of other fellow deans for their support and scholarly cooperation. May the good Lord bless and protect all of you in Jesus' name. Amen. Without missing words, my conscience will not forgive me if I fail to appreciate two great mentors in my life, Professor Benjamin Chuka Osisioma of Nnamdi Azikiwe University, Oka, my PhD thesis uh, supervisor, an accounting colossus and a professor with a great difference on one hand, and my erstwhile colleague who was responsible for my professional development, Professor Desmond Wodj, on the other hand. In the same vein, I remember the unquantifiable contributions of my late parents, Ugwezi, Bertrand, Enyuwa Dabe, and Madam Lydia, Eny, both of blessed memory. So was my being and upbringing, and I owe them eternal gratitude. I will also not fail to acknowledge the loving kindness and priceless contributions of my charming and indefatigable wife, Mrs. Chocolate Tukudi Eny, who is unavoidably absent, but whose spirit is here with us today. <laughs> the encouragement and support of my first son, Francisco Gochukwenyi, a graduate of law, and by the special grace of God, a budding legal luminary. <laughs> as well as the hope of tomorrow that I have through my other lovely children, namely Tojuku Chuka, blessing, who is uh, soon to become a doc doctor, courtesy of uh, Babcock University. <laughs> Gloria Chikere and Chisum. Equally, worthy of mention here for their tremendous influence and support are my colleagues in the old Babcock Business School, especially Professor Rufus, my HOD. Dr. Dr. Festus for Lajimi Adigbie. Dr. S. A. Dada. Dr. Vincent Unebu, the bishop. <laughs> Dr. John Enahoro, a friend whose health condition continues to give me concern. Dr. Apollos N. Wobia, among others. More worthy of thanks are all the members of the inaugural lecture committee, specifically Professors Grace Tayo, Dora Akimboye, and G.A. Alekbeleye, whose guidance and suggestions helped in no small way to facilitate the production of this literature. Lastly, I wish to profoundly acknowledge the Management and Council of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, for supporting the course of this lecture morally, ethically, professionally, and financially. <laughs> Above all, I am much more grateful to the Almighty God for giving me life on and for making this day a reality. Thank you for listening. <laughs>